Hey, well, thanks for joining me in the kitchen. I'm trying to put my shoes on here. Today, today's going to be beginner's look at germanium transistors. Now, I'm not an expert. I'm not a tech. I'm not a pro. So, <laughs> I want to direct you towards GeoFX, RG Keen's excellent resource. You type in G-E-O-F-E-X and then the word germanium into Google. It will take you to a page called Selecting Germanium Transistors for Your Fuzz Face. Also, I believe his name is Miro, the folks at Tag Board Effects. They came up with the layout that I used to build this little test rig. So, all proper credit goes where credit... Man, what a disaster. All proper credit goes where credit is due. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about, so please, all you commenters down there, let me know how much of a screwball I am. Thanks, I need that. So what's all the hype about germanium transistors? Well, they stopped making them somewhere, I guess, around the mid-60s. And they sound like the 60s. A germanium fuzz box is going to sound like the Stone, Satisfaction, or Inagata de Vida. Now, the problem with germanium transistors is they leak. They actually leak the electricity. So if you have 100 germanium transistors, some of them, a small amount, are not going to leak that much and they're going to sound good. The rest of them, eh, not so good. The other issue is temperature. When it gets up past 85 degrees, they start changing in the way that they respond. They don't sound as good. And then when they get up like 95, they just stop working altogether. This is my personal experience with the circuits that I built from using them outside. I know this is what I ran into. So when silicon came along, it was a much more viable alternative, but it sounds different. So there's a lot of information out there about germaniums. <clears throat> I'm going to try to simplify a little bit. When I first started with DIY, I bought two germanium transistors locally from a place called Fry's Electronics. These were NTE 15A transistors, I believe. So I had tested them in my El Cheapo meter, which the, the test pins to put the transistor on, they didn't make contact. So I ran some wires out and put a socket on here. I was proud of myself. I made a video. Now, I, I got a comment on YouTube, and a guy said, you know, that test you did for germanium transistor, it doesn't compensate for leakage, so you're wrong. And he was 100% correct. The only thing I would have liked to have been able to say was, at the point, I only had two transistors. So to build a test rig, to me, didn't make sense. I just wanted to, you know, put transistor number one in, hit an A chord, put transistor number two in, hit an A chord, which one sounds better. Later on, when I got the proper test rig going, it reflected my theory, which was these transistors were like way, not even in the ballpark as far as the gain that I needed for this circuit. So you need to figure out which circuit you want to try to build. And that might even come, that might even be dictated by what transistor is available. So the first thing you're going to want to do really is see where you're going to get the transistor. Now because there's so much of a variance in these parts as far as the good ones and the bad ones, you're going to want to find a reputable supplier. You're not going to want to put your money out and find out you got burned. So you can go on eBay. There's guys that sell lots, like here's 50 of this type of transistor, not tested. Or they have guys that test them individually and write down what the values are, and you pay for that. It's like 5 bucks and up for those transistors. Where you think a normal silicon transistor, like from a good cheap supplier from Hong Kong, it's like $0.03. Cents. So it's a, it's a lot more expensive. But considering what you're going to get, and if you price it up against a brand new germanium box, you can save yourself a lot of money with DIY. Now, on eBay, um, you're going to want to make sure that the supplier has a good reputation. Go ahead and take a look. I have a video called the Factory Defuzz Demo, where I found a supplier, Albez, from Czechoslovakia. Everything I got from him, I double-checked the numbers. Everything I built with those transistors has sounded just fantastic. So. I'd recommend him. Now, the other way you can go, they have a local company called Small Bear Electronics, a guy named Steve in the United States. And then there's also... He sells stereo and then the transistors that go with it. They have sets or individual. And they're pre-tested for gain and leakage. So that's another excellent way to go. Now, recently, I got extremely lucky and... 
I ended up scavenging three separate units that contained old germanium transistors. I got like a reel-to-reel -reel tape deck, a table radio, and like a phone only amp with a tuner built in on it. All from Goodwill. Each thing was like $2.99. So I got really lucky. But I'm going to be honest, scavenging for germanium transistors, it's few and far between when you're going to find them. When you do, it's like... You know, I mean, I was pretty excited. So, and then I had another great thing happen to me. A guy in the community who goes by the name Pink Jimmy Photon. Thank you very much. The guy's a saint. He had sent me a care package with a bunch of components in it. And sure enough, there were some germanium transistors in there. So I ended up with uh, about two dozen transistors. And I had no idea what the leakage or the gain was. Which prompted me to put together this excellent little germanium testing unit. Now all of my germanium transistors have labels on them and they tell me the leakage in the gain. So I'm in the process of, you know, figuring out. I got a harmonic percolator I'm putting together. I'm doing, uh, I got a Buzz Burns, Baldwin Burns Buzz Around mic tester version uh, that I could never get going. That's going now. And I'm going to be doing uh, more fuzz face and who knows what else I'm going to put together. So if you find yourself in a position having geranium transistors that you need to find out the HFE in the game, or you bought some and you want to double check the numbers and make sure the guy was uh, honest with you, this is what you're going to want to do. Unless you can afford like a uh, expensive piece of test equipment. I really couldn't tell you, but this is a very simple circuit. It's just Two resistors and a switch. You need a stable 9-volt power supply and a multimeter, which, I mean, if you're in this hobby, you're going to have all that stuff laying around. 2M2 resistor. And then the other value resistance you're going to want to get is 2.472K. So here we have the GeoFX Germanium Transistor Tester. Um, taking a look at the Vero layout from Tagboard Effects, we see that it's just two resistors. On the bottom image, they've substituted, instead of a resistor, they've used a multi-turn trimmer, a 5K multi-turn trimmer, and adjusted that to get 2.472K resistance. That might be easier than digging through all your metal film resistors to find one with that exact resistance. Either way, what you need is a resistance value of 2 0.472K. So you hook all of this up, you put your transistor in your socket. I use these handy dandy little sockets. Make sure that you have a constant 9 volt uh, power source. And then there's a little bit of a mathematical equation that you do to find the leakage and the gain. Now you'll notice here, you can see my numbers on the meter are, when you put a transistor in, it takes a while for this to stabilize up to five minutes for some transistors. So what I could do is just kind of pull a number out of the air. We'll say it's at 263. So you take your first number. This is your voltage that's coming off of the circuit. Nine volts in, 2.62 volts out. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that decimal point over. It's reading at millivolts. I'm gonna say 0.2, what's it at now, 58 and you divide that number by 2.472. That's the magic number, and that gives me 104. So that is my leakage, 0.104 milliamps. And that's not bad. It's leaky, but it's not too leaky. If it was like 0.500, that might be bad. That's too much leakage for most circuits. It depends on the circuit you're building. You gotta look into that. Okay, so my first number, we've already got the leakage. You'll notice there's a toggle switch on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch that down. The number I'm getting there is 0 0.990 volts. I put that in my calculator, hit the switch up, and then I'm getting 0.248. So I'm gonna subtract that, 0.248. And I got 0.742. Now that number needs to be multiplied by 100 and that gives me the gain. 74.2. So this transistor has an HFE of 74 and uh, the leakage is 0.104. Now getting back to, and all of this is explained, I'm just trying to demo this real quick. If you look at 
uh, R.G. Keene's excellent article, Selecting Germanium Transistors. It explains it in more detail. Um, the purpose of this video is just to kind of quickly explain germanium transistors and this testing process. Now, I wanted to, no matter what, I always wanted to have 9 volts coming in. You know, I could have just used a battery, but what I ended up doing, I cut in a DC input jack followed by a LM7809 voltage regulator. And what that does, it takes whatever voltage is coming in and puts out 9 volts. Now that voltage, it has to be higher than 11 volts. You need 2 volts headroom for this to work. So a 12 volt adapter works real good to make this put out 9. 12 to 18 volts, anything like that's going to work. And it's interesting, there are two additional capacitors on this unit. There is a 0.1 on the input, and I think it's a 10 or maybe 100 UF electrolytic on the output. I cut in an LED here, just uh, make sure I got power, and then I realized, oh hey, I just got this came in on eBay, I think this was a dollar or two, it's like a little digital voltmeter, so I threw that on there. Um, the only thing that's kind of, the only like quote unquote mod that I did was there's a third alligator clip and this connects to that resistor, the, uh, the trimmer pot. So if I set my multimeter over to ohms and you can see I've got this trimmer adjusted exactly 2.472K. That's what this formula calls for. So if this drifts, I can adjust it just to make sure that I'm running that this thing is calibrated. I put in an extra connector to make sure everything is on the up and up if I'm testing all these transistors, you know. So I thought that was a pretty smart idea. Um, the only other thing that would be kind of interesting, I can pop one of these transistors in here, you can see you got to make sure that the pinout is right. These transistors have three legs. So you look it up and it'll show you that um, kind of a triangular pattern like that, that it would be uh, emitter base collector, you know. You need to know what, what those pins, what is what as far as EBC. And then this sockets are labeled too. So if you plug it in backwards, it's going to give you a whole different set of numbers. But plugging it in properly, yeah, I, I did it right. So we start out, it's at 0.555 millivolts, or uh, volts, it'd be 555 millivolts, and then that's going to keep going down and down and down. The odd thing with this meter is, depending on where the millivolts are, it moves the decimal point. So you kind of got to be aware of that when you're typing stuff into the calculator. But um, the only other interesting thing I suppose would be is this transistor here, this is the old... $7 El Cheapo meter that has the bad sockets that don't even make contact. Um, I modded this out so it does make contact. It's like an external. I put this on HFE. I pop one of these transistors in here. Let's see, we got 143. It's telling me this HFE level on this transistor is 143. Well, doing the proper test, compensated for leakage, it's actually only 88. So that tells me that you know, well, it's leaking, so it's not going to be as strong as it normally would because of the leakage, which was 0.197 amps, you know, 197 milliamps. So that makes sense, but it also proves that if you're using one of these to test your HFE for a germanium type transistor, it's going to be way off. So that guy that sent me the message, he was right. Uh, <laughs> And I'm, I'm kind of glad that I, these resources were available to me to go ahead and accurately find out because uh, it sure is nice to know ahead of time that I've got the correct part for the job and the circuit's going to function uh, exactly how I wanted it to when I get done putting it together. So thank you very much to R.G. Keene and to Miro at Tagboard Effects for all of his excellent barrel layouts. R.G. Keene, his contributions to the community are, are many. He is like the godfather of this community. And we're blessed to have such uh, wonderful and productive people. So good luck with your germanium experiments. Uh, thank you for all the comments, views, and subs. Should have some really boring, unbelievably long-winded videos coming. So uh, peace and keep on hacking.